Hey everyone, my name is Jake and today we are going to be looking at some Choosing Beggar stories, so sit back, relax and enjoy. Customer claims we ruined her son's Christmas because she thought her car would grow. I worked retail at a large sporting goods store around the holidays. My store had a large trampoline for sale, of which a customer bought but quickly found out it was too large to fit in her sedan. No problem. We told her we would put it on hold for her and she could come back when she found a car to borrow or someone to help her out. This was in early December and it was common practice for us to put items in the back with a tag saying it was for X customer and that she had already paid. Fast forward to a few weeks later, Christmas Eve, around 5.30, store closes at 6. Same customer calls and asks if she can come get her trampoline, but she will be late. Fine, we will be there anyways closing down. I go to the back stock area only to find someone has sold her trampoline. No big deal, another store is 15 minutes away with wood in stock. I hop in my personal truck, drive to the other store, pick up the trampoline and head back to the store. Arrive at roughly the same time as the customer. We tell her we can just move it straight from the bed of my truck into her car. Sounds good. Wrong. We go outside to find she is in the same car she came to the store in weeks ago and has her son in the car, presumably the one who is receiving the trampoline for Christmas. Again, we tell her that this trampoline will not fit in her car. At this point, she is irate that the trampoline is not wrapped for her, not a service we have ever offered or advertised that it won't fit and that we have now ruined Christmas for her son because he knows he's getting a trampoline now and he won't have it tomorrow morning. At this time, my store director graciously offers to put the trampoline in his car and drive it to this woman's house that is fairly close by. We don't offer delivery by the way. She agrees. The rest of this story is now secondhand due to me no longer being there and was told to me by the director at my next shift. So the director drives to her house with this trampoline on Xmas Eve instead of being with his family. He arrives to which this woman goes inside and shuts the door without offering any instruction to help my director. He proceeds to stand at the front and knock for an extended period of time before she opens the door as if she is bothered that he is there. He tells her that he is just going to put the trampoline outside the garage, which infuriates her because it's not under the tree. He obliges and by himself gets this trampoline up her front porch stairs and to the door which he discovers is closed and locked again. He again waits on her to open the door, to which she never does. At this point, he decides that enough has been done to appease this customer and goes on his way to enjoy Christmas Eve with his family. Now, fast forward to the day after Christmas. The next day, the store was open, and who comes marching in? This lady, and she's furious. The director takes her to his office, and she proceeds to scream and throw a fit, demanding a refund because we ruined Christmas for her kid because we were so unaccommodating to her. Apparently, she was mad that he didn't put it under the tree for her. My store director quickly shuts this down, explains what happened, why he left it where he did, and everything we did to make sure she got this trampoline. She's not having any of this, and at this time, she is asked to leave the store because of her screaming. She refuses. The police department is quickly called, and she is escorted out of the building, and as far as I know of, never seen again at the store. What did she want this guy to do, like climb onto the roof and jump down the chimney? <laughs> a dog owning choosy beggar gets told off. So I work at a small, independently owned outerwear store. The owner of said store is a big dog owner. 
and we actually have a store dog. Anyways, one generous thing that we do is always have a jar of dog biscuits to offer any dog owning customers as a little extra treat. It's always cute to offer the dog some biscuits and everyone is usually happy. Then there's Karen. She comes in frequently, doesn't buy anything and always waits for us to offer her dog a biscuit. Once she gets said biscuit, she leaves the store. On busy days, she sits at the footwear section and waits until one of us is free enough to get her her dog biscuit. I think this is total BS, but we play along with her game for the time being. That is, until a particularly busy day. As usual, Karen was sitting at the footwear section, waiting for her dog biscuit. After 10 minutes of waiting, she starts tapping her foot, huffing and puffing while staring at any employee who walks by her. After another 10 minutes of this, we were really swamped that day, she barks out to my coworker. My dog is getting pretty hungry and I'm starting to get ticked. My coworker, who is normally a very calm guy, was not having any of it. He barked back. Yeah? Well, I'm getting pretty ticked because we're busy. You always get free dog biscuits and you never buy a single thing here. So no more biscuits for you. Visibly shocked, Karen stormed out of the store and so far hasn't returned. Serves her right. Wait, so you're telling me this woman waited 20 minutes, 20 whole minutes for one dog biscuit? Like, she could just go and buy an entire pack for like $5, surely? <laughs> Choosing beggar turns down cheap iPhone deal, gets his credit score ruined instead. So earlier in the year, I had a month-long saga with a choosing beggar of a customer. I work in a call center for a phone network. At the start of the year, I had a customer call in a blind rage about a phone he purchased. He had recently bought an iPhone 7 on a two-year pay monthly contract, but was furious to find out there had been several more up-to-date iPhones released since. The sales call were later listened to, and the guy told the sales agent he would not pay anything more than £35 a month, which is why he wasn't offered any more recent phones. Normally, this type of call is no big deal, as EU law lets you return electronic devices within 14 days of purchase. So offered to arrange a return, and when we got it back, we could discuss different iPhone options. I asked what he wanted instead. He wanted the XS Max instead, said this was okay, but it was almost double the monthly price. He freaks out at this and demands to speak to a manager. So I pass the call to my manager. She's on the phone with him a good hour and a half arguing. Basically, after 90 minutes of him being a douche to her, she caves and offers to sell him an XS Max with a 30% discount. He says he will only accept this if we also let him keep the iPhone 7 free for all the trouble we caused him. Manager drew the line here and said no way, send us the 7 back and we will send you an XS Max at the cheaper price. The customer refuses, so my manager just said the next stop is to issue a deadlock letter. What this means is that all offers previously discussed are taken off the table and the dispute is sent to an independent ombudsman to make a final decision. So this happens. Anyway, two days later, the same guy calls back asking to speak to me. I take the call and explain to him calmly his account is in deadlock, so we can't do anything until the ombudsman reaches a decision. He is furious as he had called in wanting to accept the excess max offer from before, so thankfully he hangs up. Fast forward three weeks and the ombudsman makes a decision. They basically say that our company did nothing wrong at any stage, so we did not have to make any sort of special offer to him. And he was tied into a two-year contract on the iPhone 7. 
He is of course furious about this too and calls back again looking to speak to my manager. Now, just to draw a line under all of this, my manager offers finally to release him from his contract and he can go to another network. All he has to do is return the phone. He acts a cocky douche and says there is no chance of this, and he is simply going to keep the phone and cancel his payments to us, and we can take him to court if we want. The company does not bother pursuing stuff like this in court, but what they do do is report this all on a person's credit file and send the unpaid debt to the debt collections agency. This absolutely tanks your credit score. My manager explains this all to him and he says he doesn't care. He's keeping the phone and won't pay us a penny and hangs up. Obviously, none of us care ultimately. We are just glad to have heard the end of him. Until this week. So he calls in, raging again, asking for my manager direct again. She speaks to him. Basically, he had applied for a mortgage and was turned down because of his unpaid debt to us. So after raging for 10 minutes and realizing he's getting nowhere, he goes into begging mode. Basically pleads with my manager to let him return the phone now, 9 months later, and have this all cleared off his credit file, along with the excuses in the book like he will be homeless if he can't get a mortgage, and he was depressed, etc. My manager obviously says no to return now, so he flies into another rage and tells us he's going to go to the papers with his story about how he ruined his life. I've just got to compliment the manager though for speaking to this guy for 90 minutes the first call. Like after probably 5 minutes I'd just be done with him. What would you guys be like? Guy throws a fit because I won't give him one beer after he had 4 for free. So this is about my ex roommate's entitled boyfriend. I had a lot of stories about them but this was a glimpse of him. Back when I was trying to be nice, I bought a six pack of beer to share with him. He picked out the beer, I tried one and hated it, and I let him have the rest except for one. I liked the bottle and the beer inside was a pretty colour. I took one bottle to my room and left him with three extra. Let me be clear, I paid for this beer with my own money that I earned with my job. He might have quit his job by now. Well, he ran through those beers in a matter of hours, and he somehow figured out that I had a bottle and he wanted it. When I refused to give it, he literally started whining like a five-year-old. Why can't I have it? It's not fair that you get to keep one. I could drink it and give you back the bottle. Stop being selfish. The longer he whined, the more I was determined to never let him have it. When he realized I wasn't going to give in, he ran to my ex-roommate and whined to her about it. She tried to get me to give it to him. He never forgave me for not giving him the beer, and the stupidest thing was that it was a $6 beer. But sadly, that was just the tip of the entitled iceberg. And that's why you should never give people free things. <laughs> I'm joking, obviously. Just some people, like, they ruin it for everyone else. Coworkers ruin baking for me. I like to bake cake, pie, cookies, brownies, and I used to bring them into work to share. I made a lot of it from scratch. It was fun and it made people really happy. Unfortunately, choosing beggars ruined it. They started expecting it every day, which really drained my money. I was getting no help too. I was staying up late trying to make desserts for these people, and then came the choosing beggars. I want brownies with powdered sugar. I want cookies with walnuts. I want cake. I want another pie, but make it with cookies. I want caramel brownies. Why didn't you make these double chocolate? I wanted double chocolate. Why didn't you bring candy? I want, I want, I want. 
I couldn't keep it up, and every time I didn't bring anything in, they would get angry and demand extra. It started becoming a chore and I hated it. I eventually told them I wasn't going to bring anything in anymore and they pitched a fit. Took them a while to understand I wasn't going to bring in any more sweets. It's taken a while but I'm finally getting back into it. If someone brings in food to work, which is free, you say, thank you. And if you don't like it, you go, thank you, but no thank you, I I'm not a fan of that. You don't go, ooh, I want double chocolate, it's just rude. I was asked to give kids Halloween candy after Halloween. This Halloween, I bought a huge garbage can and filled it with candy for Halloween. I was Oscar the Grouch. My husband and I had a lot of credit from Amazon that was going to expire, so we spent about $400 on candy, which filled the can to the top with a few bags left over. Anyway, when kids came, we gave hugs handfuls of candy. Some kids even came back twice. Afterwards, we still have a few bags of candy, which we plan to use over the holidays. Yesterday, my neighbor, who I met only once, came over with his son. He told me that I didn't give his son enough candy. Apparently, his sister and brother came back several times, but he only got a few pieces. The dad demanded that I give his kid more. He knew I had a lot left over because he saw it on Facebook. He is six foot something and huge. I am four foot ten and 95 pounds. He got right up on me until we were less than a centimeter apart. It was also 8 p.m. when he stopped by, so it was also dark. His kid was standing next to him grinning with his punchable face. I backed up into my house and shut the door. I told him I was calling the police and they left. Seriously, begging slash demanding for free candy? Honestly, I would have given the kid if it wasn't for the threat. That's like really creepy as well, walking up to someone's door at 8pm and demanding sweets or candy. Like, mmm. Wow, those two videos right there look really good. I'm gonna have to click at least one of them. Right guys? Click one of them. <laughs> Watch more videos.